And hello everyone, Namo Myoho Renge Kyo. Wonderful to have you here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today we are going to, I think this is going to be part two of, uh, what did we start reading here? The Three Kinds of Treasure. Now, uh, he's been talking about, without labeling it such, he's been talking about one of the treasures, uh, perhaps two, uh, Certainly, the one that he's talking about is our <sighs> you know it's odd to use the word protection because it sounds uh very mafioso like um it's the... we need to come up with a better word, but simply uh or not so simply. Uh, because we practice Myoho Renge Kyo, because the entire practice of Buddhism is about uh, invoking, enlivening, awakening our own perception of uh, the incredible force of life, the, the force, the process of life. Um, it's a, it's a self-betterment, it's a higher goal of uh, attaining a more fulfilled life not fulfilled in the sense of accruing possessions because that's samsara but uh fulfilled in the sense of fully expressed potential in our lives so if you think about it like that full expression of your uh, maximal potential uh whatever that is um then it follows from that, that if your self is actually your uh, samsaric perception, bodily perception of self and its environment, unseparated, the illusion of separateness is falls away, then what you're actually invoking, what you're actually uh, fulfilling is not only what occurs within this body, this samsaric self, but the Buddhist self, the Buddha self, the entirety of self and environment in samsara as one holistic thing, um, then it follows that whatever is in that environment is affected by your practice. And because, um, that goal is so all in, all involving uh then that environment is going to enlighten with you it's going to uh, buddha eyes <laughs> along with your uh your, so your mental expansion of presence in this samsaric life is like a big feedback loop because as you affect your environment, so too does your environment affect you. And it, because you're supporting, you're invoking your maximal potential, your best life experience, then your life experience conversely will express support your expression of that maximal potential. So that's uh well that's all good and that's all uh, supportive of your buddhiness but by being so positive um then obviously it is protecting you in that it repels your samsaric tendencies of attachment and possession and drawing toward you uh those aspects of the process of life that are less nurturing of your buddhaness and more compounding of your samsaricness your uh, avarice your your attachment your possession obsessions um so yeah you could say that's a protection um but it's it's almost it's more like a magnetic magneticism right if you are uh, instantiating uh, the grandness of your life, then the pettiness of your life is less likely to penetrate you. So you could say you're protected 
against that. Um, but it's more of a physics kind of statement than it is a socio-political kind of statement. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, so that certainly is a treasure, is it not? So um, let's continue. Buddha, uh, Nichiren goes on to say, over and over, I recall the moment, unforgettable even now, when I was about to be beheaded and you accompanied me, holding the reins of my horse and weeping tears of grief. Nor could I ever forget, forget it in any lifetime to come. If you f should fall into hell for some grave offense, no matter how Shakyamuni Buddha might urge me to become a Buddha, I would refuse. I would rather go to hell with you. For if you and I should fall into hell together, we would find Shakyamuni Buddha and the Lotus Sutra there. And again, this is understanding of the ten worlds and their mutual possession, right? So that if your will to instantiate your highest life potential is great, then even falling into, making a mistake and falling into a, a horrible, grieving situation causes you no fear because even in that situation, your confidence, your resolve of attaining your Buddhaness remains. It doesn't, you have no fear of those kinds of obstacles because in samsara they happen, right? It's part of the samsaric problem. It would be, he continues, as if the moon were illuminating the darkness, as if cold water were pouring into hot, uh, uh, as if fire were melting ice, or as if the sun were dispelling the darkness. But if you depart, from my advice, even slightly, do not blame me for what may happen. So I understand how devoted you are to practice Myoho Renge Kyo and me as your teacher. I have incredible value to you and you honor me at every moment. Even when I'm about to be beheaded, you stand by my side and you weep because of the sense of loss of a votary of the Lotus Sutra. Not because me, a man, Nichiren, am so cool. It's what I'm doing, what I'm acting, what I'm... Uh, the actions that I'm taking, right, are of that profundity that you stick around. Uh, and so I give you all this advice, as we read in part one, um, but if you depart from it and go your own way, then don't expect me to come running after you. If you make a mistake and you fall into grief, I will go with you because you will still be committed to practicing your, uh, your uh, uh, invocation of your awakening um, solidly. But if you walk away from me, you're indicating that, or what I'm doing as a votary of the Lotus Sutra, if you walk away from that, then your protection, as I was saying earlier, will falter. And uh, I won't go rescue you from that because you'll be making a very knowledgeable decision. Do you see? So, he continues, the plague that is raging at present will, as you predict, strike those in the higher ranks of society at the turn of the year. This is perhaps the design of the ten demon daughters. For the time being, stay calm and observe how things develop. Be an observer. Don't be reactionary. Remember Shijo Kingo. He tends to be reactionary. And do not go around lamenting to others how hard it is for you to live in this world. To do so is an act utterly unbecoming to a worthy man. If a man behaves in this way, then after he dies, his wife, overcome with sorrow at losing her husband, will tell other people about the shameful things he did, though she has no real intention of doing so, because she will follow in his lament that life was just too hard. And so she'll validate that sentiment, not thinking that she's disparaging him, right? 
and that will in no way be her fault, because, but solely the result of his own reprehensible behavior. So don't begrudge your life. Um, it is what leads you to your enlightenment. So that's not always easy to remember, is it? Um, so we have a tendency because of our obsessions to hang on to things. We even obsess and hang on to misery. And uh, I'm no stranger to that as well. So, that, you know, we're human. And uh, when things aren't going our way, we stumble. And it's hard to keep a positive attitude. And when several things aren't going our way and they compound, we start to descend into that world of, I can't do anything. Nothing works. I'm, my lot in life is da, da, da. And we start... And that's our obsession and attachment too. So realize when you're dragging yourself down, realize that because by realizing it is your point of departure to say, stop it. Those are the monkeys. Screw the monkeys. Let me get back to my Buddha-ness. Because all of this misery, it doesn't matter. It's ephemeral. It's temporary. Impermanence, remember? None of it, none of it sticks to me because I am awakening my Buddha nature. All I can do is observe it. And may, if there's something to grieve there, then grieve it. But don't hang on to it. And I'm saying that to myself as much as I'm saying it to all of you. It is rare to be born a human being because of this rare opportunity. The number of those endowed with human life is as small as the amount of earth one can place on a fingernail. And this is in the larger scope, right? The universe. Life as a human being is hard to sustain. As hard as it is for the dew to remain on the grass. But it is better to live a single day with honor than to live to 120 and die in disgrace. Now you see a very strong reminder of the, um, the cultural identity of the Japanese at this time. And now, uh, you know, this is folklore throughout the world, but here it is captured again. He continues, live so that all the people of Kamakura will say in your, in your praise that Nakatsukasa Saburo Simon Nojo is diligent in the service of his Lord, in the service of Buddhism, and in his concern for other people. More valuable than treasures in a storehouse are the treasures of the body and the treasures of the heart are the most valuable of all. From the time you read this letter on, strive to accumulate the treasures of the heart. Now, I have to remind you, in, in Asian thinking, heart and mind are one. So the way you respond to your life is a heart-mind proposition. So stay for, um, forthright in your behavior, even though you may struggle greatly, keep that mind above the suffering because that suffering is temporary. It's a condition of samsara. It's not you. I would like to relate, and so now he's starting to use the actual words treasure, right? I would like to relate an incident that is customarily kept secret. In the history of Japan, there have been two emperors who were assassinated. One of them was Emperor Shishun. He was a son of Emperor Kimei and an uncle of Prince Shotoku. One day during his reign as the 33rd sovereign, he summons Prince Shotoku and said, We hear that you are a man of sacred wisdom. Examine our physiognomy and tell us what you see there. The prince declined three times. 
but the emperor insisted that he obey the imperial command. Finally, no longer able to refuse, the prince reverently examined Shushun's physiognomy and then reported, quote, Your majesty's countenance indicates that you will be assassinated. End quote. The emperor's complexion changed color. Quote, what evidence do you have to support such a contention, he, said, he asked. The, principal, uh, the prince replied, quote, I see red veins running over your eyes. This is a sign that you will incur the enmity of others, end quote. Thereupon the emperor asked, How can we escape this fate? The prince said, It is difficult to evade, but there are soldiers known as the five constant virtues. As long as you keep these warriors on your side, you will be safe from danger. In the Buddhist scriptures, these do uh, soldiers are referred to as the practice of forbearance, one of the six paramitas. For some time after that, Emperor Shushun's strong mind of determination and conviction observed the practice of forbearance. But being irascible by nature, he violated the precept one day when, he, uh, when one of his subjects presented him with a young wild boar. He withdrew the metal rod that was attached to his sword scabbard and stabbed the boar in the eye with it, saying, quote, One of these days, this is what we will do to that fellow we hate. Prince Shotoku, who happened to be present, exclaimed, Ah, what a fearful thing to do. Your majesty will surely arouse the enmity of others. These words, these very words you have spoken will be the sword that wounds you. The prince then ordered articles of value to be brought out and divided among those who had heard the emperor's remark, hoping to buy their silence. One of them, however, told the great minister Solga no Umaku, <clears throat> Umaku about the episode. Umaku, believing that he was the one the emperor hated, won over Ataigoma, the son of Azumanoya no Atai, um Iwai, and had him killed or kill the emperor. Thus, even a ruler on a throne must take care not to give unreserved expression to his thoughts. The worthy man, Confucius, held to his belief, quote, nine thoughts to one word, which means that he reconsidered nine times before he spoke. Oh, man, these words are hitting me directly. I have a very strong nature to respond to things before I even know what I'm going to say, which at times makes me laugh because I can't believe some of the things I say uh, in quick response to things. But So I've chastised or chided myself since, since I was a teenager to learn to shut the hell up and respond, give, give myself some time to sort things out before I just blurt out reactionary words. Um, I think we're all guilty of that to some degree, especially in some circumstances. Um, but I've observed it as one of my most difficult karmic tendencies. Um, so these words speak directly to me. I don't know about you. We'll go on here. Tan, the Duke of Cho, was so earnest in receiving callers that he would uh, wring out his hair three times in the course of washing, washing it or spit out his food three times in the course of a meal in order not to keep them waiting. Considering this carefully so that you will have no cause to reproach me later, what is called Buddhism is found in this behavior. The heart of the Buddha's lifetime of teachings is the Lotus Sutra, and the heart of the practice of the Lotus Sutra is found in the never disparaging chapter. What does Bodhisattva never disparaging's profound respect for people signify? The purpose of the appearance in this world of Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of teachings, lies in this behavior as a human being. 
Respectfully, the wise may be called human, but the thoughtless are no more than animals. Nietzsche. Well, I'll have to reread that one for myself several times. It can be the most difficult things to, well, I was about to say a word. I don't know that its uh, scope is broad enough, but, um, you know, and I've used this word many times in my life, tolerance, to be tolerant. But tolerance implies a patience that comes of us with a sort of a, a resentment it says i will keep my mouth shut until you op insert opinions here or through or out of my gaze or whatever so i'm not sure that tolerance is the right word forbearance that's quite a word uh, that includes tolerance, but it also includes humbleness with tolerance. And boy, those two together, especially in our world today, with the amount of distractions and the amount of obsession and, and OCD and behavior that's all about possession, control, um, so on and so forth. Today, I mean, we're just in that it's like a fish in water we're completely surrounded by this avarice and and anger manipulation and uh and foolishness really because the foolishness comes from not being able to distance ourselves from it to detach from it so that we can forbear forbearance forbearance and Nietzsche in here makes it abundantly clear that this uh, this chapter in the Lo Sutra on never disparaging read that chapter that behavior sounds storybook like it doesn't sound like something you and I could accomplish in our daily lives it's a, almost romantic but in fact, Nietzsche says, this is the heart of Buddhism. The heart of Buddhism, why? Because Buddhism is a teaching about how to conduct our human lives as best we can. Yes, it's a mental attitude. And that mental attitude has to provide for that environment, other people, to be ourselves keep coming back to that so if anger and and words like hate or radical kind of wanting to punish our thoughts we hold in our minds about others then we're no longer behaving myoho renge kyo we are behaving like the monkeys like animals like samsaric animals we're not even human when we do that because a human is about having the perceptive capacity for buddhaness so this is a very strong statement by Nietzsche that if you want to know what it is to experience buddhaness your buddhaness incarnate invoked in this life forbearance not forgiveness not tolerance not avoidance but detachment and observation kind-heartedly right not not immolation not obsequiousness. Don't give up of your dignity. But at the same time, in other words, don't let people walk over you.
But at the same time, your dignity comes from forbearance. Because in the parlance of the day, you rise above it. You constantly rise above it. How do you rise above it? By not d being dragged down into it. Look at the ten worlds. If you want to stay in learning, realization, bodhisattva, buddhahood, the moment you start feeling hateful or angry or disdainful or superior to others, you, zoom, you go right down to the lower worlds, don't you? And that's the language of Buddhism, the three evil paths. Hell, hunger, and an anima animality. Boom. You see how the language of Buddhism is about it dissecting our mental states? And this is a constant moment-to-moment -moment battle, really. And the more we chant, the more we win that battle. The more our life condition supports, protects, supports our higher life conditions, our higher worlds of existence. That's not to say it isn't challenging, my friends. I well know it. Especially as I get older. I would like to say I get more wise. Intellectually, from my study, I think, yeah, I've gotten a lot of wisdom out of my practice. But I'm still a samsaric being. I'm still a man. And some of my deeply formed karmic energies, they've stayed with me. That's motivation for me to continue practicing, isn't it? There's always this task at hand. That's why. That's why we say it takes courage to practice Buddhism correctly. Because you have to take really hard looks at yourself. And, you know, there are things about ourselves that we can see how we can change habits. And we do. And that's great. But at some point you're going to see that you're completely when it comes to figuring out how to challenge some aspects of yourself which are all around us yourself is not just you and because we live in an age that is the three lower paths we're mired in it so it's going to take great resolve to float ourselves above it so the one word I'd like to focus on for myself, and I encourage you to look at how it works in your life, daily life, forbearance, for, forbearance. Whew. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this Sangha. Thank you, new... new uh, New people joining our Sangha every day. It gives me a sense of great responsibility and great joy. Don't forget to download the podcasts and, uh, and use the threefoldlotus.com site. Let me know if there's uh, things you think I should add to it. Um, it's all free material. Get your guhans on. Um, and keep studying. Keep your practice up. And please be mindful of your health, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Next one. Bye for now.